creek Walk them up and down in the summer heat Same old boy changing like the seasons Country kid turn it to a town right heathen Hey everybody, welcome back to Old Man Van Running, here again in the Old Man Van Cave, the Old Man Van Castle. So today, I'm going to give you my first run review of the Brooks Glycerin GTS 21 in Boston Marathon colors. How cool is that? So if you've watched my previous shoe reviews, you might know that I really like the previous version, the Brooks Glycerin GTS 20. Thought that shoe felt lighter than it was, thought that shoe had plenty of cushioning and even had a little bit of responsiveness in that DNA Loft V3 midsole. So the question is, the question is, did Brooks raise the bar with the GTS 21 or have they missed the mark? So before we go into the details, we're going to go outside and see how the first run in the GTS 21 went. So right out of the box, I took the GTS 21 on a 13.1 mile hilly 3-1 run. So if you know what a 3-1 run is, it's the first three quarters of the run at easy to moderate pace, and the last quarter picking up the pace. So it was a really big risk taking a brand new pair of shoes right out of the box on such a run. So let's see how that went, and then we'll get back inside and get into the details. Okay, out here on my Saturday half marathon, day before the end of week seven on my Boston Marathon training block. First run in the Brooks Glycerin GTS 21s. Right out of the box, it felt a little bit firm. Uh, as I got out there, it's about 41 degrees. So I was a little worried immediately, but they're starting to wear in, starting to loosen up a little bit, starting to feel that bouncy nitrogen infused cushioning a little bit more initially. And again, it's only three miles in. They uh, don't seem quite as responsive as the Vongo V6s from New Balance, but remains to be seen. The other thing I'm noticing, because I've been wearing more shoes with lower drops, is that the 10 millimeter heel to toe drop, which I haven't really worn in a while, I noticed it a little bit, but I think it's gonna be fine for these longer days, you know, when I start heel striking or I'm getting a little bit, you know, more tired. So I'm thinking right off the bat, this is gonna be more that long run easy day shoe, whereas the Vongo V6 so far has proven to be pretty versatile. So more to come. So, I'm halfway through my Saturday half, wearing the new Glycerin GTS 21s from Brooks. Cushioning's starting to break in a little bit. They were a little firm at first. Another thing, there's plenty of room in the toe box here. Fit true to size, plenty of room in the toe box. I was a little worried at first when I felt the upper and I put my feet in. Felt a little like the Gel Cayanos, to be honest. So I was worried that I might end up but the same issues, you know, hot spots and maybe some blisters. So far, I'm over halfway through, getting up on seven miles and not a single hot spot. My foot is nice and locked in. The uh, midfoot is narrow enough, but not too narrow. And it gives you just plenty of room for your toes to splay in the forefoot. So, so far, so good. One other thing, stability wise, they feel a little more stable than the Glycerin GTS 20s. But, you know, they use the same technology, just those guide rails, no medial posts or anything like that. So we'll see if it's a wider base or whatever, but you know, we'll check that out and we'll get back to the house. Hey everybody, done my Saturday half marathon here. Saturday, day before the last day of week number seven of my Boston Marathon training. This was the first run and the Brooks Glycerin GTS 21s, really, really nice shoe. You know, I was really worried about taking them out for a double digit run on their first run out of the box, but was not disappointed. No hot spots, no blisters. They softened up a bit, 
not a ton, but they softened up a bit, so not as firm as the first mile, and that's to be expected, right? Just a couple of quick observations before I get into the detail review back in the cave. They're not as responsive as the New Balance Vongo V6s. They also don't feel quite as responsive as the previous GTS 20s. So, you know what? We'll see how they work out over time. They do feel a little more stable than the GTS 20s. We'll talk about that. They do feel a little heavier than the GTS 20s, but we'll go into those details inside and I'll give you my thoughts on the first run in the Brooks Glycerin GTS 21. So, a pretty good first run in the Brooks Glycerin GTS 21. You know, I took that risk, right? But I didn't get any hot spots, no blisters, no niggles whatsoever. So, phew, I got through that, lucky me. So before we get into the nitty gritty details, we will start with the numbers. First of all, price. The Brooks Glycerin GTS 21 comes in at $160 US. That's right smack dab with all of the other daily trainers out there, stability daily trainers, neutral daily trainers, right around that 140 to say 170 price point. Shoes in general are getting more and more expensive. It's not overpriced, it's not underpriced. If you can get 400 miles say out of this shoe, it'll be worth it, but man, it's really unfortunate the prices are getting so high these days. Next you get weight. Again, this is a stability daily trainer. It's got a lot of stack height here. You don't expect it to be the lightest shoe out there, and it's not. It's 10.5 ounces in a men's size nine, or 297.7 grams. Again, it's not the heaviest shoe, it's not the lightest shoe. It's kind of what I expected. Next, we move on to stack height. As I said, it's almost like a max stack height shoe. It's got a big slab of this DNA Loft V3 nitrogen infused. You have 38 millimeters in the rear foot, 28 in the forefoot. Brooks says that's an additional two millimeters from the previous version. That gives you a heel to toe drop of 10 millimeters. You know, especially lately with my shoe reviews, I'm really starting to lean towards the lower drops with eight millimeters being what I think is about the sweet spot for a long run shoe and then even down to five millimeters for you know those faster shoes and race shoes. But you've got a 10 millimeter drop here, which is what I expected, what I knew I was getting into, and is commensurate with the previous version. Now let's get into the details of the shoe. First, the upper. The upper is an engineered mesh. It's 61.1% recycled. You can see it here, pretty soft. Brooks calls it their warp knit upper. Uh, don't know what that means. All I can say is it's pretty soft. Initially, it felt a little bit stiff when I first took it out of the box. I was a little bit worried it was going to feel similar to that in the A6 Gel Keanu series where I have had some issues with their uppers, but it softened up after that first run. It didn't give me any hot spots or blisters, so that's good. Again, it's very, very pliable here, although on the outside it does feel a little abrasive, but not in the inside. The underlays here or the reinforcement in the toe box, I didn't have any issues with rubbing on my toes on the inside at all. You can see as we move further back in the shoe, the, really the only overlay of note is the Brooks logo on both sides of the shoe. Not a lot of extra structure there with overlays. You do have some nice reinforcements around the eyelets. That's typical these days just to make sure that the laces don't start to wear through. And then you move to the back of the shoe and you do have reinforcement in the heel counter. It's a very, very stiff heel counter there. But again, a very comfortable upper so far, no issues. It's wider in the forefoot, so my toes were able to splay really well. No issues there. Actually feels like there's a little more room in the 21 than there was in the 20, and more room than in the Vongo V6 or in the Gel Keanu 30. Moving back through the shoes, we'll start with the laces. The laces are a little bit rounder than I would like. I like them flat. I like them minimalist. These are a little rounder. They have a little give to them. I haven't had any issues so far, but they're not my favorite types of laces. I, I really don't enjoy the round laces. I like them nice and flat, and it tends to give me a better lockdown with those. Now, you do have a very well padded tongue here, well padded. I don't know if you can see this, well padded tongue. It is not gusseted, no gussets there. 
but it doesn't move around a lot. So once it's in there, I didn't even realize it wasn't gusseted. I didn't know. And I just put it on and I laced it down. I didn't have to do the marathon lacing, which is using that second eyelet and looping it around. So it didn't cause an issue. I didn't have to tighten it too tight over the top of my foot to start having some excessive pressure there. So no issues whatsoever, just a nice well padded tongue. Just don't like the laces as much kind of rounded like this. Moving back, you've got a very nice padded heel and ankle collar. Very nice, well padded. There's nice padding here. Rides down just a little bit because this is a very well structured and firm heel counter. So this gives a little break to your Achilles right here. I didn't feel any undue pressure on my Achilles. I didn't have any heel rub. I didn't have any movement with my foot in here. So no issues whatsoever. The sock liner, very comfortable, very comfortable. Again, at first, I felt it might be a little stiff, like the ASIC shoes, but no issues whatsoever. Again, no hot spots, no hot spots under my arches or on the bottom of my toes. So really good there. Big question for me with this upper is how breathable it's going to be when it gets warmer. You know, you've got a lot of padding here. You've got a thick tongue. You know, the upper is not overly thick, but I didn't feel it was the most breathable. I had kind of lightweight to midweight socks and it was a little cool outside. I didn't feel like my toes were getting cold at all. So as the weather gets warmer, we'll have to see if this shoe is kind of warm or if it's breathable enough. Moving down to the midsole, this big slab of DNA Loft V3, nitrogen injected, right? I really liked this midsole in the GTS 20. I was surprised at how responsive the GTS 20 was. I really liked it. It felt soft, somewhat springy, had a little bit of bounce. I really enjoyed that shoe. I don't know if it's the bigger slab. I don't know if it's the wider base. I don't know if it's the outsole material. It just doesn't feel as soft as the GTS 20. It also doesn't feel as responsive and it's basically the same midsole material. I really don't know what to say there. Other than that, I'm hoping it breaks in over time. As you can see how wide that midsole is, very, very wide in the rear foot. No bevel though, and we'll talk about that in a minute in the performance section, but there's no bevel there. And you know, it's just this big wide slab. You can see it's very wide in the forefoot. So you have a very wide base there with this midsole. And then what you have is what Brooks calls their guide rails. Pretty much all their stability shoes use these guide rails. I really like them. And you also see it here on the medial side. The guide rails act as like the bumpers on a bowling alley. You've heard me say that in all of my Brooks reviews of the Glycerin GTS 20 and other brick shoes that have the guide rails. And that is simply to keep you, you know, moving in the right direction. If you start to supinate too much or pronate too much, it just gently guides you back in. It's not real hard plastic. It's just a little bit firmer uh, midsole material there. And it does a really good job. Basically a sidewall that cups your foot. I really like the guide rails. I've liked them from the beginning and they continue to work well. And I must say, I really do like the way Brooks does stability. Moving on to the outsole. The outsole has plenty of rubber coverage there. Not as much as you had in the previous version, but plenty there. They call, Brooks calls this their road tack rubber. Don't know really what that means. You can see how thick it is right here, but it feels very tacky, but not too soft. It's thick enough and in all the right places it was really grippy out there on the road, but it also feels like it's got plenty of wear in it. It feels a little more substantial than like the Hoka outsoles. I, I'm really thinking this outsole has the potential to be very durable. So we'll see how it holds up after hundred miles. Moving on to stability. Real wide base, very wide base. We already talked about the guide rails. I really like the stable feeling of those guide rails. I think the GTS 21 feels more stable than the GTS 20. I'm thinking the reason for that is a wider base here, a thicker slab of midsole material. There's really a wide, wide, wide base in the back. There's really not much of a bevel here. We'll talk about that in performance in a minute. It's just, 
you know, a very planted feel. The outsole could have something to do with that. It's a little bit stiffer uh, outsole, but it just feels more stable than the previous version. It doesn't look like they've really done anything different with the guide rails. So I'm thinking it's got a lot to do with those things I mentioned. Now to performance. I'm gonna tell you, I'm a little disappointed. I expected a little bit more out of the GTS 21 based on my experiences with the GTS 20. I was really pleasantly surprised with the GTS 20's performance. It felt lighter than its weight. It felt a little more responsive. I like that springy cushioning. And you know, I'm just not getting that feel in this shoe. It feels a little clunkier. It feels its weight. It doesn't feel lighter than the 10.5 ounces. And I don't feel that springiness, extra cushioning, or real smooth roll through the gait cycle. I'm thinking something has to do with maybe some of this outsole material, maybe it's a little stiffer, maybe the base is a little bit wider, you've got a thicker slab of midsole material. I think another part of it is you really don't have a bevel here in the heel. So you kind of get a flat feel, and it doesn't help roll you through the gait cycle when you heel strike. So, you know, I. I, I was hoping this would be another step up from the GTS 20, but sadly, after the first couple of runs, I don't feel that. Doesn't mean it's not a good shoe. I just don't think it's as versatile and the performance is as good as the GTS 20. Next, we go to comfort. It's a comfortable shoe. It's a comfortable shoe. No issues whatsoever. Step in feels good. Right out of the box, I was able to do a double digit run, no problems. The difference, again, from some of those other shoes that I've used recently is I don't feel the cushioning is as comfortable as some of those shoes, even the GTS 20. And again, I don't know why. It's pretty much the same material. It's just not quite as comfortable. It's not as soft as the Gel Keanu 30. It's not as springy as the Vongo V6. The cushioning is no better than the Vongo V6 in my estimation. So, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm hoping that this midsole kind of livens up with more miles in it. So the jury's still out. We'll see at 100 miles if that's changed. But fit, however, is excellent, right? Fit's excellent. There's more room for my toes to display in the forefoot. So that's really, really good. Uh, lockdown's excellent. Again, I don't know if it's breathable enough. We'll have to see. So comfort, you know, feel on the foot is great. It's just the ride isn't as good as I expected. So my final thoughts on the Brooks Glycerin GTS 21. I think it's a very good shoe. I think the fit's great. I think there's plenty of room. It's true to size. All of that is really good. I think it's got more than adequate cushioning, just maybe not as much as I would like. And that cushioning is not like a springy cushion. So I don't really feel much responsiveness from the shoe at all. So, you know, I'm hoping the midsole livens up as I get more miles in it. And I know this is going to be a shoe I'm going to put plenty of miles and do a lot of long runs in over the rest of my Boston Marathon training. It's just not the shoe I'm going to take out when I really want to pick up the pace a little bit or have a little more lively session out there. So what would my first run rating of the Brooks Glycerin GTS 21 be after a long run and then a couple of short runs? Well, I'm going to give this shoe a 9.3, a 9.3 out of 10. Why a 9.3 instead of a 9.4 or 9.5? primarily because I don't feel there's as much cushioning as the previous version, and I don't feel this shoe is as responsive as the previous version. So those are the two reasons I'm dropping it down a bit. Maybe that'll change after 100 miles. Stay tuned and you'll find out. So thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll get notified when more videos are posted. Comments, 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 any and all comments really do help my channel. And as always, if you have friends, running pals, acquaintances that you feel might like the Old Man Van Running channel, please let them know. So thanks again. And remember, lace up those shoes and let's get out on the roads. Railroad tracks run along the creek. Walk them up and down in the summer heat. Same old boy changing like the seasons. Country kid turn it to a town right heathen.